Now, William R. Walton wrote an article in March of 1940 for Pennsylvania Angler Magazine. Now, interesting side note, this magazine is still being published today. It's called Pennsylvania Angler and Boater, but it's been around since the 30s and continuously published. But back in the 30s and 40s, when Walton was writing for them, it was very heavily focused on fly fishing. Now, the article that caught my attention today was called A Successful Hair Fly and Some Gossip About Tying Materials. And in it, he was talking about a successful hair wing streamer that he came up with and all the interesting animals that he experimented with in making his hair wing streamers. Now, I'm talking polar bear, regular bear, moose, elk, raccoon, possum, skunk, and ringtail cat. And one of the patterns he's talking about in this article, he called it the manga prince because at the time he thought the animal he was using was a manga, which he learned later it was the ringtail cat, which isn't even a cat, it's a nocturnal animal in the raccoon family. Now, I'd never even seen this animal, but according to Walton, it wasn't that uncommon of a tying material back in the 40s. He got the tail from his mail order fly tying supplier for 10 cents. So, of course, I had to do some research on this to see, does anybody use ringtail for fly tying today? So, I went to my first supplier, and sure enough, they had some. So, I ordered a ringtail cat tail. Uh, it costs a little bit more than 10 cents, but I should have that in a couple weeks, and that's going to be pretty fun to experiment with. So, this pattern. Walton said he did use a ringtail, but he also tied it with a skunk and a raccoon, too. And I'm going to be tying it with a skunk today because, you know, I've got one here handy, and it's a pretty cool pelt that I don't use all that often. So we can't really call this pattern a manga prince. We're going to call it the skunk prince. Now, one other thing that really caught my eye about this pattern was the unique way he tied the body. Now, he used the same tuft of hair for the tail and the body. Now, that in itself is not all that unique. There are other flies out there that do that, but he does have two ribs on it. He's got a flat mylar tinsel and then a wire rib, and they're counter-wrapped to each other, so it looks a little bit like a crosshatch pattern. So I think William Walton came up with a pretty cool fly back in 1940. And as far as I know, this has never been featured in any books. But I really like it. I think you're going to like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise. As you can tell, that's not a real common body style. The underbody is the same hair as the tail. And it's got the two ribs, a flat and a wire. But I do think this is a pretty cool looking little fly. And I'm going to tie this on a size 8. This is a seven extra long hook though, so it's a pretty long hook. It's not a limerick bend, but it is, it does have that little twist at the point. And I'm gonna use black thread, so let's just lay a base down to the start of the bend. And since the tail and the body are the same piece, I'm going to go ahead and catch the rib in, and I'm going to catch the, the flat mylar tinsel in first. And pay attention to how I'm doing this. I'm going to catch them in on opposite sides of the hook. I want silver showing, so I'm going to have the silver facing the hook, so right there. And I'm going to go ahead and bring my thread up here and then catch in the wire rib. And I'm going to use a small. You could probably step it up to a brassy, but with that size 14, pretty thin mylar tinsel, I think the small looks better. And I'm gonna catch this one in on my side. Just take a note to keep it parallel all the way down. And I'm gonna leave my thread at the back, but you see that? I've got both ribs coming off opposite sides of the hook. Now for the tail, which is also the body, Take whatever fur you're going to use and get a pretty generous clump of it. See that? That's pretty thick. I do need to thin it out because I've got quite a bit of under fur right here and I don't necessarily want that being part of my body. So see that? I'm just pulling it out. You could even take your comb if you really wanted to get it out. But I'm just going to catch it in right back here with the length of the tail I want. It's going to be about like that. So let's catch it in right there and I do want See my thread is kind of wide right there. Let me give that a clockwise spin to cord it up a little bit. Now I will be able to get a more of a bind with these wraps right here. And I'm only gonna do three, maybe four wraps back here. Just enough to really get it caught in. Okay, now I'm gonna lift this up 
and do some open wraps to get my thread up here to the front of the body. Let's say about right there. Okay, now we've got a little bit of a mess here. Be kind of gentle with it right now. You don't want to tug on it too much because we haven't really caught that in in the back all that well. So let's just take, I would say two, two just loose wraps, just not tight at all. Let the weight of your bobbin holder hold that in and we'll use our, our ribs to shape this body. And remember, we're gonna counter wrap these. So this one, just open wraps, not real tight, but I'm kind of using this to shape the body as I go up. Now when you're catching it off up here, you can go ahead and put some tight wraps. Let's snip this tinsel and then get rid of all this excess right here. And this might take me a, a couple of snips right here. And now let's counter wrap this rib. And I'm gonna space these out, try to exactly as I did the flat tinsel. And it'll give us that kind of neat little crosshatch look. Okay, let's catch this one off up here and then we'll flatten out this head before we go into the next components. Now the next thing we're gonna catch in is our wing and I'm gonna use the, the same animal that I used for that one. In this case, this is a skunk. So about that long, but let's see what I have up front. Yeah, that's pretty thick, so I'm going to pull some of this out. I'm actually going to take my comb and pull as much of this out as I can. That will just make my head a little bit smaller. I'm going to do the same trick I usually do with bucktail. I'll put one loop just around the, the hair and then do a pinch wrap around the hair and the hook, and I can make this one a little tighter, and then the next wraps even tighter. So I like that wing. That might be sticking up a little more than I want, but before we go, you know, before we finish it off, we'll put a couple of loose medium wraps right there to pull it down a little bit. But I'm putting some tight wraps up forward, and hopefully I can snip this off close enough and at an angle where I'll still have a decent looking head. All right, I'm certainly crowding that a little bit right there, so I'm gonna just try to push it up with my fingernail and see if I can bind this in right here. Now, I don't mind a big head on these, but what I do want to avoid is mangling up my thread right there. So I've got a few uh, scragglies coming off my thread where I probably nicked it on my thumb or some of that, you know, the front of that hair. So next thing I'm gonna tie in, some jungle cock eyes. I think jungle cock must have been a lot more plentiful back in the 40s because there were a lot of flies that used them. Most all streamers back then used them. So get a, a nail about the size you want before we catch it in real tight. Well, I'll do both sides and then I will adjust them if needed. That one is probably laying just a little bit low. So what I'll do here, just try to pull down on it to prop it up a little bit. And then the same thing on this side here. Now, if I, after I've got them at the right angle I want, I'll put a few wraps going forward, just enough to secure them. Now we'll snip off these excess stems here. 
Now, if I didn't have jungle cock for this, I would just make a bigger head and paint white eyes on it. I think that is really what jungle cock does for you is it gives the, you know, it's a bait fish pattern, so it gives it the, the hint of fish eyes. So I think that head is as big as I want to get it. It's a little bit fuzzy, but I can probably clean that up with a big dollop of my UV resin. So let's go ahead and whip finish this guy. And take a look at it. Do we have any cleanup? Yeah, I got some fibers coming off the bottom of that tail I might want to clean up. And then I've got a tag into that thread right there. But I think I'll be able to clean up that head and hide most of that with my head cement. So that's it. I think it's a pretty nifty looking pattern. Certainly a unique design on that body. So I appreciate you watching everybody. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.